or maybe she uses the pick and roll a little bit and utilizing it that way in the, in the second half, but you're right. I mean, they gotta come up with more scoring in the 24% shooting percentage. That must improve um, as well. And the other thing too, Ron, is Carnegie Mellon shot 39% in the first half, but I mean, they missed quite a few shots from point blank range, so that shooting percentage could be much higher for the Tartans. First offensive possession of this second half for Carnegie Mellon. Shot was blocked by Hellman. But Hillary also fouled Laurel Pereira as Laurel went in for that layup. So she'll shoot two. Hellman will draw her second foul. And Pereira with her first opportunity at the foul line this afternoon. She's a 71% free throw shooter on the season. She had eight opening half points. And the Tartans did not attempt a free throw in the first half. And I think it's mostly just because of the way that they work offensively. I mean, they either blow right by you so there's no contact at all, or they shoot a three. But definitely not a habit that you'd want to start if you're the Spartans defensively sending them to the foul line. So that's uh, hopefully a downward trend for them. Good ball movement. This is Hellman with a step on the baseline. Hillary off the glass, won't go. And Pereira with the rebound, ripped it. Here come the Tartans the other way. Pereira gets it back. This is Mayberger between the circles. Playing catch out top with Oxner. Now Mayberger back with the basketball. It's Higgins on the wing. Pereira with a ball fake. Solid one off Emily Todd. And she takes the glass on her way to her first basket of the second half. Pereira has 11. Spartans will keep it. It's Hillary Hellman, number 24. Hellman, the junior guard out of Lakeside Park, Kentucky. And this is what I would expect from the Spartans here in the second half. Got to be aggressive, push the ball up and down the floor. You need extra possessions in a game when you're down by double digits. Fighting for the rebound, not quite getting it that time. Off the miss was Rebecca Rollins. From the Tartans, this is Mayberger with the basketball. Ball stolen, Ambergee ahead to Gonzalez. Alicia Marie, left side, looking inside. It's Rollins from the foul line, kicks it back out. Hellman, strong drive, right shot, off the glass, it's good, and she'll look for the three-point play. And the Spartans are gonna have to, at the very least, start with their offense with Hellman. You have to work your offense through her because at this point, she's not only your best three-point shooter, but she's also probably your best player off of the dribble as well. You see her going right and drawing the contact there. So the ball has to start in her hands, and she can create other shots for other players, hopefully that will be easier ones than what they saw in the first two quarters. Hellman with 11 points. The lead is at 16 for Carnegie Mellon, and that is exactly what it was at halftime. Assistant women's coach, Coach Orcutt, told us it, it really needs to start in the second half with defensive stops. There's one. If they can turn the defensive stops into points, that's obviously the best case scenario. Checking back in, Katherine Higgins. Higgins had six first half points. She'll replace Laurel Pereira. Pereira has 11. She leads Carnegie Mellon in scoring so far to th this afternoon. So Todd and Gonzalez will control it as Hellman will inbound it. Spartans trying to snap a four game losing streak. Carnegie Mellon coming into this game, eight wins, three losses. Their last game was a 97-93 win over Ohio Wesley and that one went two overtimes. Well, how about that defense there by Mayberger, Ron? I mean, Hellman driving baseline, just can't even get an inch on her. So 
So the defense on the last two possessions has turned two turnovers. They have been failed to, they have failed to though convert those defensive stops into points on the other side. Amber Gee and Hellman. Hillary in front of her teammates, gets a screen from Rollins. Fighting through the screen, kicking it off. That's Alexis Ambergee, and she hits the three. See, that's what we're talking about right there. I think when, when you're down the way you are right now, I think that Hellman has to become essentially the point guard. And when you get her creating, getting other players involved, that's how you get back in games. Jackie Hullo wants a timeout. She wants to make sure she reminds her team that the Spartans aren't going away. Lead has been cut to 13. As Jen Reimer talks to her club, we'll take a timeout. We'll be back. Anova Living is a modern, amenity-rich residential community located in Cleveland's Greater University Circle neighborhood, offering studio, one, and two-bedroom apartment homes. Enjoy all-inclusive living with convenient on-site shopping, 24-hour concierge services, a 24-hour fitness center, resident lounge, and more. All within close proximity to Case Western Reserve University. Anova Living online at anovaliving.com. Tartan's looking inside. Third straight defensive stop for the Spartans. This is Hellman from 15 feet. Front of the rim, back of the rim, and Hillary Hellman. Helps Case on a mini run here. She's got 13. Just taking what the defense gives her. Tough shot. Boy, Michaela Falaire hit that 16 footer with hands in her face. Ambergy for three. She's been hot. Missed that one short. Did hit anything but the bottom of the net after missing the rim. So the Tartans will get it back. Todd's going to take a seat checking in uh, for her is fellow freshman Emma Kane. Kane comes in with four points. Todd will take a seat with two. This will, this will be one of the bigger lineups that the Spartans have on the floor with the 5'10 Rollins and 5'10 Hillary Hellman and Kane down there. So the Spartans should pick up the activity on the boards now with three players at 5'10 in there. Well, Eddie, that's four out of the last five possessions as you get a look at Jackie Hull, the Carnegie Mellon head basketball coach in her seventh season. That's four out of the last five defensive possessions where Case has caused a turnover or had a Missed shot with the rebound. So that's a good sign. You know, you mentioned the, 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 the largest lineup that Case has had it, it, that's in there right now is Rollins is working inside. This is Gonzalez traveling with the basketball. It's another thing that Coach Orcutt mentioned. When I, when I mentioned the length of Carnegie Mellon, Brooke pointed out, she said, you know what, we can't even practice against that because we don't have it. Right. So when you see it in a game, it's, you know, it's first impression all the time. Yeah, it's different. That's, that's an excellent point. This is Higgins. Long three, left-handed shot by Mayberger, missed. Rollins couldn't grab it. Higgins will. Carnegie Mellon with another look. And the second opportunity is filled up by Michaela Filaire. She's got 10. Leads back to 15. Spartans have cut it to 11. This little hook there by Kane. Emma Kane with six. Kind of a half hook scoop. You would definitely love to see that shot develop in her first year. Kane off to Ambergy. Ambergy with Hellman far right. This is Gonzalez. He'll swing it. Hillary will get it on that right wing. Works it on the block to Rollins. Rollins, strong left hand move. Missed the shot. Higgins comes up with a rebound. Well, Rebecca did everything right that time, but make the shot. Catherine Higgins from 16 feet. Kane with a good box out. Here comes Gonzalez the other way. Just over four minutes to play, third quarter. Spartans down 13. Ambergy draws the foul, she'll shoot two. As Ambergy heads to the line, we'll take a look at that Emma Kane shot inside. Here's Kane, the freshman, working on that block. Giving up inches in height, but did a nice job of faking left, coming back to the right. 
Yeah, that's her strong hand with the right hand. So that's definitely the, the move that you want to lead with. And I also like the, the nice heads up, smart play by Ambergy to uh, cut to the rim when, when Rollins was looking for a pass and had some room right there too. I think the Spartans, with their basketball instincts, it's keeping them alive in this one at this point. Two freshmen have checked in off the bench for the Spartans, Jasmine Floyd and Matty Grossman. Floyd number 10, she plays outside, she's a guard, playing defense right now. Grossman a post player. This is Floyd on defense. Now it's Grossman working inside. Maddie blocked the shot. She had one in the opening half, but she also drew the foul. So Grossman got ball plus four. Shooting for the Tartner, or the Tartans will be Laura Oxner. Oxner had two points in the opening half. Megan Shinoski, number 35, also got in there for case two. Floyd's going to bring it up. Looks for the high screen from Grossman. So back to her freshman teammate. Nice ball fake. Grossman strong to the basket. Off the glass. Too hard. Here come the Tartans. Pereira with the basketball. Gives it up. They'll swing it. This is Higgins. Catherine will shoot the long three. And Hellman comes up with a rebound. Hellman spins, falls on her backside. Controls the ball and Floyd will set the offense. Floyd right side, Hillary steps into a three, got it. <laughs> Hillary Hellman with 16, averaging 17 on the season. It's a 10 point game. Yeah, just like that. I mean, you get Hellman a couple of shots, get a couple of stops and here they are. There's the stop, Kane to Rollins, to Hellman. Hellman right into the defender. And drawing the foul is Jen Mayberger. Well, this place got loud really quick, Ron, and, and that's the way to do it. Just feed your best player, give her the ball in space. It's a contested shot, but considering it's Hillary Hellman, you still encourage it because of the high percentage with which, with which she shoots. Spartan's right back in it. Eddie was a great pass. I mean, it, 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 what I mean by that, it, she was able to step and shoot all in one motion. This is Hellman again, fadeaway three. How about Emma Kane? Strong rebound. Kane went up, shot was blocked. Tartans knocked it out. Spartans will keep it. Off the bench, checking back in, Alexis Ambergy. Ambergy will replace Maddie Grossman. Grossman's had uh, short minutes in her rotation, but they've been very effective. Every time she's been in, she's been active inside defensively for this Spartan basketball team. And that's, boy, they really need that against this Carnegie Mellon team that is clearly bigger. This is Floyd, soft baseline shot. Kane again with great hustle. Rollins long three. Mayberger the other way. Carnegie Mellon working on a 10-point lead. They lost it out of bounds. Going up for the shot. Just didn't work out. Megan Jane. Yeah, and, and Ron, you wondered where the defense was going to come from when, when Grossman stepped off of the floor, but saw some activity from Kane on the offensive glass. And how about the shot blocking of Kane as well? That's a step in the right direction for a young freshman. Rollins and Hellman, Hillary got the defender to leave her feet, dribbled under it, drew the foul. Well, with a little bit more savvy, Hillary goes up, just puts a shot up in that situation. You get that defender to leave your feet, especially when you're outside that arc, just to act like you're shooting it. Yeah, and Hellman is just so much more than a shooter from distance. I mean, she can really sell a, uh, a headshot and, and score inside as well. Boy, you look at the speed there. Hillary Hellman off the dribble. A beautiful dribble drive. She's got 18. Back cut. It works. Pereira with 13.
Hellman, pocket was picked. Ah. Hillary went hard down on the floor and, and hard on top of the defender that time. Trying to, it is Jen Mayberger. Jen, I think, I think Jen's head hit the floor when Hillary landed on top of her, and that, that, that had to hurt. It's also the third personal foul on Hillary Hellman, so she's going to be taken out. So Spartans will have to look to somebody else to try to keep them going with where they're at, the pace of the game on the offensive side. Hellman, or Hellman, Hillary Hellman with 18 points, three fouls, minute 30 left to play in the third quarter. So Hellman's on the bench. Shot up and missed, ball's tipped, kept alive. Kane fights for it, and Emma Kane grabs the loose ball. Gonzalez to Floyd. Floyd back to her guard teammate. Working it in to Emma Kane. This is Rollins, that's a three. Missed it, and drawing the foul is Ambergy. Ambergy up and over the back of Jen Mayberger, and Alexis Ambergy will be called for her second foul. And that's the last foul for either team to give. Herrera with the basketball. 12 seconds to shoot. 50 seconds left to play third quarter. Off a screen. 18-footer, it's good. It's Megan Jabe. She has four. Lead is at 12. Spartans have cut it to seven with two minutes to go. Carnegie Mellon on a 5-0 run in the last 90 seconds. This is... Amber Gee to Rollins, back to Alexis. She'll shoot the three and got it. Ron, I like the decision not to try to go for a two for one. Just make sure that you get that first bucket. Good ball fake. Shot was missed. Rollins with the rebound. Case with an opportunity. Maybe they'll go two for one anyway. Spartans with four. Four to shoot. This is Kane. She'll put up a soft shot. Natalie Kane got it. How about that? Quick 5-0 run to end that third quarter. The lead was at 16 at halftime. It increased to 18 in that quarter. Spartans were able to cut it to 7. It went back to 12. Then they finish on a 5-0 run, and it's back at 7. 49-42 after 3. We'll be back for the final 10 minutes. Stay with us. of an extraordinary dining experience where you're certain to enjoy the ambiance as well as the menu? Table 45, Restaurant and Bar is the award-winning mixed culture restaurant located at the Intercontinental Cleveland, offering cuisine from around the world created by accomplished local chef Zach Brule. Open every day, the atmosphere at Table 45 is relaxed yet inspiring with weekday chill-out happy hours, a behind-the-scenes chef's table, and outdoor dining on Patio 45. Call for more details or reservations at 216-707-4045 or visit us at TV bl45.com or on Facebook. Spartans have pulled to within seven in a pretty good way to end the third quarter. It's a good second quarter for Carnegie Mellon, Ron, who finished 21 to 10 in that quarter, but it goes 21-12 in favor of the Spartans and a lot of that damage at the end coming with the top scorer, Hillary Hellman, off of the floor. So that is an excellent piece of, of news for Case Western Reserve. Eddie, you're exactly right. She drew her third foul. They took her out. A couple minutes left in that quarter. Didn't want her to draw her fourth before they got to that fourth quarter. And her teammates responded. You know, they are now, this is the 11th game into this season without their top scorer, Kara Hageman, and you can see that, you know, they're, they're starting to find their own niches, their own identities, their own confidence levels. It was a great shot by Kane that we saw in the replay. Michaela Falaire with 12. Coming out of that quarter break, Tartans with a quick bucket, back cut. 
into a double team. Here come the Tartans. Alexis, or Alicia Marie Gonzalez steps in, draws the steal. She'll go the other way, looking for a teammate. Working inside against Grossman. Shot was blocked. Maddie tried to get it back. Victoria Avery with the block shot. We love the aggressiveness by Grossman despite drawing a crowd of two defenders uh, relentlessly attacking the rim. You definitely like that. Not the result, but you like uh, the idea. Strong drive. And they'll call the player control foul. Boy, Ron, how many times over the course of her career have we seen Alexis Ambergy draw offensive fouls? I mean, she's an offensive foul drawing machine at, uh, at five foot eight at a guard, needless to say, too. She's one of those tough players that every coach loves to have on their team. She'll stay in the game. A little shaken, but she's in. She'll inbound it to Gonzalez. Hellman's back in the game. Jackie Hullum, maybe you heard her on our microphone, said know where she is. Talking about Hellman. Hellman with 18. Spartans are down nine. Inside nine to play. That's Ambergie for three. Missed it right. And Higgins comes up with a loose ball. See a little change in philosophy there defensively for the Tartans. Two defenders on Hellman on the three-point line. Worked it inside, taking advantage of the height. Shot was missed. Here comes Hellman the other way. Hellman with a hesitation dribble. Lost it, and Higgins will come up with it. Mayberger down the floor. That's Filaire with the shot. She missed it, and the loose ball came right and fell into the opportune hands of Megan James. She's got six. Yeah, that was pretty, pretty opportune right there. One white uniform, two, maybe three black uniforms in there. When you have numbers down low, that favors you. So Higgins is at on Hellman. Higgins with long arms, and she's creating a little bit of a challenge right now for Hillary Hellman. Higgins at six foot one, but very athletic. We've seen her. She's with the basketball now. We've seen her dribble it like she's a guard, and her athleticism allows her to guard a scorer like Hellman. Here's Emily Todd on a loose ball. Todd down the floor to Ambergie. Alexis draws the defense, kicks it out. That's Hillary for three, missed it long, and Higgins comes up with a rebound. Well, and Pace Ron, is up and down right now. They are, and you just really hope that it doesn't take Hellman long to find her stride offensively because the Spartans need the points and, and, and fast. Todd, she'll shoot to three. Fighting for it, keeping it alive was Rollins. Todd grabbed it, put up a shot. She drew the foul, she'll shoot two. I think the Spartans on the floor are just talking about don't try to shoot yourself back into the game with one shot. I mean, this is going to take a couple possessions at this point. You're going to have to be uh, methodical about it, take care of the basketball, value each possession. Well, great hustle. It started with Rollins. Emily Todd was the recipient of Rollins' good work. And she'll look for her second point at the free throw line. So Todd, the freshman, has four in the afternoon. Two from the field, two from the foul line. It's a nine-point Carnegie Mellon lead. Higgins sets a screen, coming off of it, missing the shot. Rollins goes up. Rollins, ball stolen. Mayberger to Higgins, beautiful. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of those textbook plays that's, you know, when you execute it the way you're supposed to, that's virtually unguardable for the most part. Approaching the six-minute mark. This is Gonzalez, top of the key. Hellman will draw the defense and the foul. She'll shoot two free throws. On the floor the shot. On the floor the 
They're going to say the foul was on the floor. So Hellman will not shoot free throws. But it will get the Spartans that much closer to shooting free throws because now they've only got one to give and not even the six minutes at that mark here in the quarter. That length again creates trouble. Here come the Tartans the other way. Missed the shot. Gonzalez tried to get the rebound. Ball's loose. Carnegie Mellon comes up with that loose ball. And how about the defense from Todd at five foot four, forcing that miss. Spartans live another day and get the turnover anyway. Kane to Hellman. Hellman against Higgins goes right at her. She'll shoot two now. Fouls on Catherine Higgins. That one is undeniable. That's her third. Hillary's doing a lot of that. I don't know if yeah. she's suffering cramping or. Well, she's just she's just doing a lot of work, Ron. I mean, a she's season ago. She's tired. Yeah, well, as in a season ago, pretty much her job was to sit on the three-point line, wait for an open shot. But this year, we see the ball in her hands so much more. I mean, this is a marathon for her. I mean, she's going up and down the floor, creating shots for other people. And, I mean, it's, it's tiring. Hellman with 19. This will be 20. You know, and especially when you've got almost half of your team's points. I mean, that's expending a ton of energy. Higgins off the glass, wouldn't go. Hellman boxing out inside. Laura Oxner went up and over the shoulders of Hillary Hellman. And Hillary's going to take a 80-foot walk from foul line to baseline to shoot some free throws. Wow. Already five fouls for the Tartans. Case has none in this quarter, so. Coach Holland just pointed that out to the official right in front of us. I'm sure you heard it. But I mean, you can't argue the last two. Higgins and, and Oxner, those fouls were clear. Uh, and I don't think uh, Coach Hull is probably arguing that. She's probably saying, hey, you know, take a look at Case. They may be fouling every now and then, too. So we're going to keep it right here for this uh, short timeout. It's 55-46. Here's Jackie Hulla. She's wearing the purple, purple turtleneck with black pants. She's the head basketball coach, seventh season here at Carnegie Mellon. She's 96 and 72 as the Tartans head coach, but Jackie is a veteran coach. She has spent 19 years coaching women's basketball, both collegiately and professionally. She was at Dartmouth as a head coach, Arizona State as a head coach. Then she took a job with the Seattle Reign in the uh, Women's Professional League. And then when, the, uh, when that league folded, she left coaching for a while and then found it was time to come back and found a job at Carnegie Mellon and has really done a great job. I mean, Eddie, I've been doing these University Athletic Association games for probably 15 years now, and there was a time uh, when Carnegie Mellon was like the I don't know, the cupcake on the schedule, I guess, is the best way to put it. That Those times are long gone. And Hulla has done a great job of rejuvenating this program. So that's Hellman at the free throw line. Yeah, and it all starts with, with recruiting. I mean, there's a certain type of basketball player that she's looking for. I mean, not a single player on this roster is under five foot seven. So, I mean, you definitely have to fit the persona of the program, and they found some great talent. Seven point game. Feed inside, pass was too long. So the Spartans will have a chance now to draw as close as they have been. Probably since it was 22 to 17 with two minutes left in that opening half. And that was right before Carnegie Mellon went on that huge 15 to four run to close that half. They just haven't been protecting the basketball down the stretch. Some turnovers caused by the Spartans D and others are more self-inflicted, but keep that up and the Spartans will get right back in it. Boy, Emily Kane just, you know, she did so many, Emma Kane did so many beautiful things that time. First of all, coming to the ball in the pass, and then using her body for position to drive baseline, and then that little helicopter shot. Just a great series. Unfortunately, Spartans couldn't match it with a stop. Mayberger hit the three. A 
Looking inside, that's Rollins. She'll shoot two free throw. Good court awareness that time by the Spartans. Yeah, and that was excellent use of Kane, the hot hand, as a decoy. I, I think it was pretty clear that's where the ball was going. And then Roland at the other end on the weak side with some great court awareness right there, receiving that pass and going to the stripe. Rebecca Rollins with her first two points of the afternoon. Six point game, 4.28 left. Higgins on top with Helmet on her, and they're going to say a hand. They're going to call a hand. Fouls on Helmet with a hand check. That's her fourth. Coach Reimer just reminded Hillary she's got four fouls. You know, as touchy as that is, it's consistent, though. And it's been, I think, maybe four years now. They, they changed the rule on that. Any hand check will draw a foul call, regardless of if it's a soft hand or an aggressive hand. Right. And, and you know, to be fair, they, they're consistent with that. This is Higgins against defense. She'll shoot two free throws. Yeah, and they will especially call that if you go on top of the screen as opposed to underneath. I think your odds of being guilty of a hand check in that case is that much more likely. But yeah, you, you just really hope that with that fourth foul, it doesn't affect Hillary mentally on the offensive side. She's going to have to stay alert like she regularly is despite being one foul away. That foul was called on number five, which is Emily Todd. That was her first. Higgins with eight points. Averages 15 on the season. Her and Michaela Falaire are the top two scorers for this Carnegie Mellon team that has three who average in double figures. And they've got four players on the floor right now that have scored in double figures today. Hellman with a long three in front of a defender, Hillary Hellman. That was one of those where you you kind of just hold your breath, but for some stroke of magic it goes, and with Hellman, you're okay with it. But Catherine Higgins is saying, get me the basketball. She'll be back at the foul line shooting one, trying to complete this three-point play. And Ron, it was really only a matter of time that the six-foot-one forward was gonna start um, asking for the ball, demanding the ball, because like you had said earlier, her ability to create off the dribble with her size, virtually unguardable. Time out on the floor, we'll take one too. When we come back, Higgins will try to complete that three-point play. Anova Living is a modern, amenity-rich residential community located in Cleveland's Greater University Circle neighborhood, offering studio, one, and two-bedroom apartment homes. Enjoy all-inclusive living with convenient on-site shopping, 24-hour concierge services, a 24-hour fitness center, resident lounge, and more. All within close proximity to Case Western Reserve University. Anova Living online at anovaliving.com. Here's a good look at the 6'1 sophomore from Montclair, New Jersey. Higgins with 11 points, and it'll stay at 11. So the lead eddy is at six, with 3.33 left to play. Good ball movement, Rollins, bank shot. Top of the key, it's a two just inside the three-point line. Nicely done, not sure if she intended it to bank it off of the square or not, but the Spartans will take it, and the uh, differential down to four. Throw it away. Trying to get it to the hot hand, which is Higgins, and Catherine wasn't looking for it. This is Ambergie the other way in front of her coach. Now it's Gonzalez with the basketball. It's a four-point game. Jackie Hulla, the Carnegie Mellon coach, clapping for defense right in front of us. Ambergie, top of the key, now Gonzalez. 12 seconds to shoot. Inside, three minutes to play. Draws the defense. Rollins forces up a shot. Higgins with the rebound. She had a, a wide open 18 footer, actually dribbled into defense that time. She did. Defense! 
Eight seconds to shoot. Spartans looking for yet another stop. Shots up. Boy, that's a tough shot. Wow. Michaela Falaire is a reason she's the leading scorer on this basketball team. That is probably a shot that only she is able, able of knocking down at this point in the game in crunch time. Hellman's going to shoot free throws. Blocking foul on the baseline will go against Jen Mayberger. That's her third. And Ron, seeing that the Tartans are in the bonus now, you know, the, the little things, the little reach-ins here and there, the little bumps here and there, that will result in Spartan free throws as well. I think offensively, they will definitely be aware of that and try to create something out of that. Hellman's first miss on the afternoon. She was five of five from the foul line before that miss. Boy, she missed them both. You knew when that one left her hands that it was strong. Those are two huge misses with two minutes left in a six point, five point game, six point game. Higgins working strong against Rollins through the foul. There's, it is obvious that Katherine Higgins feels that she can take Rollins to the basket anytime she gets the ball and she wants it, she calls for it. And to her teammates' credit, they're getting it to her. Right, well, and, and at six foot one, I mean, there's probably not any single defender that could, could stop her one on one. So I, I think just have to be more aware of the entry passes to her. That's where you have to, to deny her the ball before she even gets to it. Lead is back at nine. Hellman off the screen, missed the three. Minute 30 left. Carnegie Mellon starting to secure this basketball game. It had gotten as close as 58-55 with 3.37 left, and that's coming all the way back from an 18-point deficit in the third quarter. And they made up a lot of ground in a short period of time. And since that time, when it got tight, give Carnegie Mellon credit, they answered the storm, they weathered the Spartan storm, and they're on an 8-2 run since that moment. Kane with the basketball, now they'll give it to Amber Gee. Kane sets a screen inside to free Hellman. Hellman looking for an opening, Amber Gee will take the shot, she missed it. And the Spartans have drawn cold at the most inopportune time. So Carnegie Mellon's going to walk the floor. They're going to shoot free throws. Pereira with 13 points, make it 14. She is two of three from the foul line this afternoon. Laurel Pereira, 11 points per game so far this year for the Tartans of Carnegie Mellon. Hellman will bring it up. Inside, it's Kane working against Higgins. It's going to be fouling from here on out. Spartans down 10 with 46 seconds to go. Fouls on Alexis Ambergy. That's her third. So look at Laura Oxner, Chester Springs, Pennsylvania. Coach Reimer wants a timeout. Oxner missing both of those free throws allows there to be a glimmer left in the final 45 seconds. Jen Reimer will talk about it. We'll watch it happen after this timeout. 
Alpha Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. So in this shot, you can see the two picture banners that are hanging on the wall. They're of the seniors, senior basketball players at Case Western Reserve University this year. There's just one on the men's team and just one on the women's team. The, the one on the women's team is Kara Hageman, who will not get to play her senior year, unless, of course, she takes a medical red shirt, and that's still up in the air. But there's a look at Hageman. We'll see T.J. Duckett in a little bit. It tells you, it speaks volumes of the youth of both of these teams right now. When you hang banners to honor your season or seniors during their final season, and there are only two that hang for two programs. And if my memory serves me correctly, I don't remember last year being that much different. I can remember Javi Alvarez from the from the men's team and and Jess McCoy and maybe maybe one other senior for the for the women's team. Foul in the backcourt, Amber Gee. We'll send uh, Michaela Falaire to the free throw line. Falaire on the season averaging 19 points per game. She has 14, looking for 16. Elman kicks it. That's Amber Gee with the shot. Missed it. Higgins with the rebound. They'll foul her. And McCain does it in the backcourt. Higgins has shot an awful lot of free throws here in the last three or four minutes. She's uh, been to the line four times. It actually seems like more than that. She's been very active. She is clearly on the offensive end been who they've really gone to. I think they like that matchup with uh, Rollins, the 6'1 Higgins. Well, and Ron, it's just a lot tougher to get the shot that you want against a team like the Tartans because they're just very uh, in the way of the passing lanes, you know, with the, the, the long length that they do have and the closeout speed. And their defense really did show up in the last couple minutes of the fourth quarter. Just not enough buckets for Case. Well, it was 58-55. And right now it's 69-57, so that, that speaks to exactly what you just pointed out, Eddie. The Tartans of Carnegie Mellon finished the game on an 11-2 run.